Can't get enough BYU football? Listen to Cougar Nation. Mitch Harper takes your calls Monday nights from 6 to 7 on KSL News Radio. Podcast at KSLNewsRadio.com. I expect some happy callers tomorrow night as BYU oh, yeah. gets it done over Texas Tech 27 to 14. Mitch Harper, Alex Curry today, though, on first and 12 of Big 12 football roundup and alex today's show is brought to you by macy's grocery store happy shopping and cougars their fans and body happy right now because that was a much needed (laughs) win yesterday over texas tech hey uh, i'll tell you too it was a it was a absolute victory for the cougar tail the special edition cougar tail (laughs) yes with the bacon pieces on it tremendous Uh, huge huge moment it was such it was so good and I'll tell you, so my kids ate one. They said it was great. Uh, I t- happened to take a bite, and I said, uh, wow, I'm actually surprised. And I told you, this is 100% better than the chocolate option that they gave last year that they rolled out. It was like, oh, we're just going to oh, put some chocolate frosting on it. It's like, step it up. Step your game up. We're inviting all these people from, from the south. They're going to be like, hey, you just, oh, you made it a big chocolate donut? That's cool for you guys. Like, we put it a bacon on it. And, uh, and you know what? They're, that means they're taking it seriously at uh, at, at LaBelle Edwards Stadium. I, uh, you know, at some point I did hear tale that they had run out. Uh, and so there were some unhappy fans, which I, to, to which I responded, you can bring your own bacon next time to the stadium, <laughs> sneak it in, sprinkle it on the old donut, and there you got, yourself, uh, you got yourself a little bit of a meal there. That was a highlight for one of my kids. So I'm just telling you that's, uh, that's how it works with, uh, with that. But – uh, yeah, the fans were loving it, man. It was homecoming. Not that that means anything anymore for uh, for folks, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, huge win. 27-14. And the way that somebody told me, they go, dude, they kicked those guys' butts. And I said, yeah, they kind of did. But they could have done it a lot better. <laughs> like, they could have really kicked these guys' butts. I mean, it was kind of funny because, um, I, I mean, there were so many left opportunities out there. I hate to go full negative, but the cynic in me and the guy who's critical – Watches the offense in the second half, Mitch, and when it was twenty-four to seven at the half, I thought nice and efficient in the first half. But man, it was just so many three and outs in that second half, and so many attempts at just throwing the ball three times in a row that was really disappointing too. It's amazing how BYU wins games this year. Yes. it's just it blows me away and how often they're doing it at a five and two record. And they were outgained in total yards, three eighty nine to two seventy seven. Yeah, time of possession, they closed the gap a little bit at the end there, but it was a, a sizable edge to Texas Tech, and it didn't matter. The the thing that's nice about BYU this year, Alex, is that they have a defense that can create takeaways. And when the, if the BYU offense just simply takes care of the football and doesn't cough it up, Keaton Slovis nearly did in that first half. Ooh, but if yeah. they take care of the football. They're going to be in a position to win a lot of ball games against, you know, average teams. And I think Texas Tech is near the bottom of this conference. Maybe that's a spoiler alert with the Big 12 power rankings <laughs> coming up. But I think that, you know, Tech, BYU capitalized. And they, they got playmakers on defense. That hasn't happened for a few years on this in this group. So if the offense just takes care of the ball, they'll be in a spot despite their issues to, you know, put the foot to the gas and finish a team off. Uh, they can still win some ball games, uh, even though they're outgained quite often in, in these wins. It's become a habit, right? Like at this point, every game that they've had a win, you and I seem to be sort of jamming about how they're not just outgained a little bit, but like by you know pretty pretty good chunks. You know, usually over a hundred yards they're being outgained by. But it's not just, and it is like you said, the time of possession made it look like it was a little bit closer than it actually was. I think you get a better idea. When you see, again, how many plays, how many more plays Texas Tech ran during the game, 80 to 57. We've seen that in so many, basically every win they've had, uh, maybe save the Sam Houston, or no, the SUU game. You just, you see them being out, or you see them being outgained. You see them being, uh, the, the opponent has more first downs. The third down issues were not really solved this week, Mitch. That's the other thing. I think, I think uh, Tech ended up 9 for 18. I know that uh, Jay Hill's not going to be super excited about that number because they talked so much about how, trying to figure out that third down situation. And so uh, there are things that definitely they're going to want to work on, and there's stuff that they can definitely go, hey, we got to get better at X, Y, and Z. But at this point, you kind of go, I don't know, this is the habitual for them. Have you ever, though, Have you? I, I don't remember the last time BYU had a 
plus five takeaway game against anybody since I've been alive. I don't really remember uh, a game like that. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. I mean, I remember that Utah game in 2016. They had six takeaways on Utah, but they also gave up, I think, three or four. Right. Uh, it, it's it's not often where they're plus five. I'd have to go back in the archives. And then you, you add to the fact that how many times has BYU won a game where they only have 15 passing yards in a half? That was the second half for BYU, Jeez. yet they still won the game. They only had 78 yards total. Uh, on offense in that second wow. half, there was a stretch in, in five five drives, four out of the five drives that it ended in three and out. And it looked like it was going to be five out of six until Aiden Robbins pulled out a first down on third and thirteen, right. a conservative play call, and he and he hammered it down and and got the win for BYU. But uh, you know, I just think this is what it is with BYU. They're they're not going to win pretty as they continue to fill out this Big Twelve conference. But man, what a what a great way to to kind of a filling out a game and get a nice win at five and two and win by two possessions, I mean, it's not pretty, but that's just what BYU is this year. I I feel like Keenan Slovis has not looked great again, but he, he took care of the ball, and, and that's all you can really ask for at this point for this team and just find a way to get wins as you're one step closer to getting bowl eligible. Uh, has the run game been solved then? Can you go ahead and just re- put that check mark next to it? Everything's all good with the run game now, Mitch? Is that how you feel? I feel like the offensive line took a huge step forward, huge. and I think it's just it's nice that everyone is in the place that they should be in for the beginning of the year. I, Connor Pay at center, Paul Miley at left guard, Waylon Lapuaho at right guard. It feels like this is what it should have been from the get go, and they they were physical at the line of scrimmage because Texas Tech, you know, you think high powered offenses with them, but their best NFL draft prospects are McFarland at uh, defensive tackle and that edge rusher number seven. The, BYU contained them. I mean, they got some shots in on Slovis, and even Slovis looked like he kind of was nursing his left hand a little bit. I don't know if you noticed that, but, uh, you know, he, he keeps getting back up, and I thought the O-line did a really good job, and I think the the running backs stepped up and, and took advantage of, of the opportunities when there was holes there. I mean, L.J. Martin goes through 93, Robbins for 49. You'll take that. As compared to what they were, where they're averaging about 60 yards a game, right. I think that's a huge step forward and a co- much-needed confidence boost for BYU in this game. And it was a chippy game, too, Alex. I mean, this was a thing going back and forth. I mean, you know, in the post game, Tyler Batty, defensive end, if you remember, he had a heck of a game, too. Batty, I thought, had one of his best performances this season. But he, in the first half, a Texas Tech player spit on him. And I asked him about that exchange, and he kind of revealed some additional uh, details about kind of the chippiness between Texas Tech and, and BYU. Um, I I bull rushed one of those. It was a field goal. Um, and I just pancaked one of their one of their offensive linemen laying on top of him I get up and this dude just comes out of nowhere just starts saying all sorts of stuff and then spits in my face um and then honestly actually to end the game as well uh their right tackle 76 did the same thing after Josh Singh made that tackle um just uh yeah came up and I was like hey man you know like good game and he just beep 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 that's, so that's how you they were play, playing the right way. They were they were pretty they were pretty upset throughout the game. So you know we'll take advantage of that. Ew! Two times you get spit on during the game. <sighs> that is disgusting, bro. Well, but listen, uh, I always love when guys come after you after you've just beaten them. You know, and and, and you kind of go, hey. Uh, I mean, all they have to say is just a bunch of nasty words to you, and then maybe they spit on you. But yeah, uh, I was wondering too because I didn't know what had happened. When I see the guy walking off, I'm going, what is going on here? And then later it was when I saw the replay uh, on, uh, on TV of them tossing him out, but you didn't really get a good definitive uh, when, he, when he got spit on. But interesting going through the, uh, the good game line, somebody spits on you again. I will say from the rushing standpoint, I know it's not totally fixed. Like, he's, like I was saying that facetiously, but 150 yards on 30 carries, that's five yards per, Mitch. Yep. Like that's by far their best – their best game, not just overall, but it just it was so much more consistent. And I think that's why it was weird in the second half because you had all those three and outs because they went to the air uh, multiple times in a row. Or they would decide to run it on that third and nine or a third and 13. You know, at least Aiden Robbins converted on that. But they had these, these moments where they're like, let's throw it on first and second down. And you're going, well, one, they're incomplete passes and they're stopping the clock. And it's like, aren't you trying to chew up the clock a little bit? So that, that was stuff that I think was frustrating from a, a, a play call standpoint that uh, people certainly in our post game last night uh, were going after A-Rod, uh, <laughs> you know, about about some of those calls. But you know how people are when you win the game. There's still a little bit of uh, 
of a of a backlash from fans when they when they find the negative stuff. But overall, stuff that they can work on, but they still won by double digits. It's crazy. A plus a, on top of all that, Mitch. It's also a game that they were dogs. They were underdogs. Yeah. And they just keep doing the same thing again. Underdogs. Uh, not going to be. They're going to be outgained. They're going to be out uh, possessed. They're going to be outplayed in terms of how many plays they run, and they'll still win the game. And in this case, like they did against Cincinnati, double digits. There you go. And I think too, this felt like the first. Uh, you know, at home at least, the first real Big Twelve game, and maybe now with that element of Batty, Batty, you know, allegedly getting spit on at the end. Uh, you know, maybe this is going to be the beginning of something kind of fierce and nasty yeah, between two Big 12 teams. Maybe this is going to be the juice needed. No longer this, you know, everyone's kumbaya, happy, happy-go-lucky. Everyone's just honeymoon Listen, phase with BYU. Maybe this is now the nastiness coming out. Uh, Mitch, I love that you've worked in the newsroom enough to say the alleged spitting incident between Texas Tech and BYU. <laughs> <laughs> the dude spit on him. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it happened. Occurred. I mean, what allegedly the way Batty to reacted to in the first half, you just knew something, you know, something I thought crazy it was, happened. I thought it was interesting because it didn't seem like the referee saw it. Yeah. But he just kind of was like, what? And he's like, look at my face. There's spit on it. And then they toss that guy, and then uh, he gets it again at the end. All right, so there you go. Uh, we're going to take another break. We'll come back. Let's listen to some Kalani Satake on the way back. Uh, and we'll listen to what his post-game comments were. And, and, it, and it is. It's a mix of some of the good, bad, the ugly. And, and it's, I think, a kind of a head coach's dream in the sense that you had all these takeaways, all this stuff going on, and yet there's things to work on. Kalani talks about that. All of this on First and Twelve brought to you by Macy's, freshest fruits and vegetables. You only should go to Macy's to get all of that. Happy shopping at Macy's. Who brings you First and Twelve every week? All right. Uh, we'll take the break here. We'll come back. More to go around the corner. 97.5 the KSL Sports Zone and KSL News Radio. It's first and 12.